Are you the family member of a hoarder and have been tasked with clearing out their home? Or maybe you're the friend or property manager who's been enlisted to downsize a hoarded house. Well, you're in the right place because in today's video, I am speaking with William Pierce of Get My Junk. He is a junk removal and clear out expert. And we're talking about the three things you should know before tackling a hoarding cleanup job. Hi, I am professional organizer, Katherine Lawrence. I help you live a life with less clutter so you can have space for the things that truly matter. William and I worked on an episode of Hoarders. Uh, it was the episode filmed in Fredericksburg, Virginia. That was with the lovely and very dignified Mr. Forrest. Uh, if you want to catch that episode, it aired on March 29th, and that is on A&E, March 29th, 2021. So I called William on very short notice because Forrest was, he, he was just excited about continuing the clean out even after the cameras stopped rolling. So I called William and I was like, hey, you want to come continue this project with me? <laughs> and thankfully he said yes. So William, how did you feel about getting that call? Oh, the call was just awesome. Uh, I never thought I would had the opportunity to help out with the show a &E Hoarders Aftercare Program. Um, watch it all the time. Love the show. So to get a call from you was like a dream come true. So we are so looking forward to helping out. We are such strange people <laughs> that <laughs> I think a lot of people would like cringe or be kind of nervous about getting that call, but we're like, yeah, come on, let's do this. And it's so wonderful to help people out and, uh, what a fun and interesting way that we do that. So Definitely. we're here to talk about the three things uh, that you should know before tackling a hoarded space. So let's start with number one. Uh, for me, it's about safety. You know, we really, uh, a lot of these hoarded spaces are not safe to work in. And like, how do you know when you get that call, when you go and meet someone for the first time, like what are you looking at in terms of safety when addressing a home or yard that's been hoarded? Great question. I think the first thing that I tend to look for is structural damage within the house, making sure it's safe for me and my crew to go in and work efficiently and not have to worry about someone getting hurt. Uh, we look at the stairways, we look at uh, tripping hazards, uh, we look at a multitude of things in the house. But that is the number one item of concern when we first go into a house. So the second thing I know that you are very mindful of, and I certainly am always on the lookout when um, clearing out a hoarded home is valuables. So this could mean you know jewelry or keys or things that have monetary value, but also wedding albums, legal documents, financial documents. So you know, what, what can you do to find that wedding album or, you know, that very special thing when you are facing just mountains of clutter? Right. Uh, great question. We're very empathetic towards uh, our customers' emotions and what the, you know, over the past. And we come across a lot of items such as um, the memory books. We come across uniforms that maybe the wife's husband wore during the war. Mm. Um, we have found jewelry. We have found money. Uh, we've even found uh, an AK-47. We found yeah. several weapons. <laughs> yeah. So every single job we find something and we always try to keep in mind what the client or customer has is going through and um, you know, we make sure we let them know before we take anything out of the house if this is something that they truly wanna keep. And nine times out of 10, they'll go ahead and keep those items that are held very near and dear to their heart. Right, so. yeah, I, I, that's one of my biggest pet peeves of working as an organizer. Um, and I've actually had you know, friends and family members while working on uh, A&E's hoarders come up to me and say like, well, isn't your job to just put everything in a trash bag and, and you know, just move it out? I said, no, I'm sure. actually looking for the car titles, the collectible, like what's what's in here? So 
Um, I know we would both love to do our jobs as, as quickly as possible, but yeah, I mean, the reality is this is a, a lifetime of, of treasures, either sentimental or with monetary value. And we have to, that, that's our job to, to, to really find those items. Okay, so the third thing we're going to talk about with clearing out a hoarded home is what happens to all the stuff. Now, recently I was reading online a, a fact about TV's hoarders, which was that everything goes to the landfill. So I just wanted to tell you guys who are watching today, that is ab absolutely not true. Um, I definitely have been personally involved with donating items and uh, you know finding another home for items. Um, you know, it is tough on hoarders because there is a lot of extreme damage and there is some contamination. So you cannot donate as much as you could and say a, a normal functioning home that's clean and, and safe. Um, but I know that effort is made. So William, I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about that? Like, do you make an effort to find new homes for things that are salvageable? And how important is it for you to have an exit strategy for all these things that you're clearing out in a home that may still be in good condition? First, that is the number one question that we get from our clients is, where is my stuff going? Yeah. And I always assure them that depending on the items, we try our hardest to either donate um, to local charities uh, we work directly with the SPCA. So yes, when we go into these homes, we like to, number one, find those items, set those items aside. And a lot of times we'll put those items on very last because those are the very first items that we're going to take to these donation centers. Oh, okay. uh, so which you're is loading the truck. Yes, I have seen this done where you you put the trash, the sort of landfill items towards the back, and then you're going to put the donations towards the front, and then you're going to go to the charity first, unload the truck, Correct. and then, yeah, that makes so a lot of sense. A lot of times, uh, what we come across is if we're doing multiple loads, we try to do a full load of just donatable items. Right. Um, but we have to make sure that the furniture is in good condition, that it's not infested with anything right. uh, that shouldn't yeah. be. Um, clothing, uh, you know, books. We, we, we donate a lot of things uh, to the local charities and the charities love it when we yeah. bring in our truck and we help unload. But there is a flip side too. There's a lot of items that a customer might really want donated, but in, but in reality, those items really cannot be donated. So we gently try to tell these customers that this is the reason why these items cannot be donated. Right. And so then we take them to a transfer station and the transfer station go ahead and they do what they want with them at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good lesson for, for really anyone who, you know, we may have some listeners here or someone watching this video who may have some hoarding tendencies and, you know, the clutter is getting a little out of control in their own space. And that would be a, a big advice piece that I have for you. Like instead of kind of stashing and packing that stuff away with the potential of it getting, you know, some critters in there or some mold, like make that decision to donate it while it's still in good condition, because it's hard for us to come in later and say, well, you know, a couple of years ago, if, if this was still in good condition, of course, someone could use it. Of course, someone, you know, would, would get some use or value out of this, but because it's kind of been left in this sort of squalid condition, now we cannot donate it. And I know that breaks my heart. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Right. Um, definitely. If, if they can try to donate those items a little earlier right. uh, and try not to wait to the last minute. And that also makes our job a little easier as well. And it makes, you know, their job as well, a little easier having us in their house going through their items because they've already went through everything and figured out what they want to donate, what they don't want to donate. And, um, but we love this. Uh, I love helping these. I love helping customers. 
And uh, yeah. it's fantastic. Well, William, thank you so much for joining me. I know uh, listeners are going to get a lot out of that information. And there's something actually very unique about your business. And I should have brought it up earlier when you were talking about military uniforms and 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 finding those things. But what what is that thing that makes your business unique? We are veteran-owned, locally operated, and ready to serve. U.S. Coast Guard all the way, Semper Paratus. <laughs> awesome. William, your company services Central Virginia. So I know I've got a couple of jobs with you booked coming up, and I look forward to working with you soon. Uh, we look forward to working with you as well. Thank you. Are you the family member of a hoarder or have just found yourself in a position to clean out a hoarded house? Let me know in the comments below. And please like this video. That will let me know that this is a type of video you would like to see more of on my channel. And be sure to subscribe for more videos on downsizing, decluttering, and the business of organizing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.